Hey my loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're gonna to be talking about the new moon in the sign of Sagittarius. Now, there's so many things that are going on with this new moon that are really unique and special. Some that are good and some that need a little bit of support, I'm going to say. And one of the first things that I wanna say is the fact that the day before the new moon, Mercury decides that he wants to go direct again in the sign of Scorpio. Now, again, Mercury is connected to communication, how we think, how we are able to articulate those thoughts, using our words and our thoughts for power to manifest things in order to set intentions, in order to create alchemy and changes and transformation in our lives. And also, it's connected to the things that we hear, the things that we receive as far as messages and technology. So our phones, our laptops, our cars, etc., etc. So you might have experienced some type of breakdowns, whether it be within your transportation, whether it be with communication or connections with people, or you might have actually experienced some misunderstandings. These are all things that Mercury retrograde can bring, but now that he has kind of taken these steps back and is moving through the sign of Scorpio, this gives us all a chance to kind of reevaluate to reconnect within ourselves within the truth of what it is that we want for ourselves how we connect with others the way that we connect with others and our expectations with others now i don't see this as being something that is so easy and effortless because Scorpio energy in general tends to deal with the darker sides, the shadow sides of life, the things that are not so easy to say. But Mercury, again, had you kind of reevaluating it and rethinking it and in some ways it could trigger insecurity it could trigger feelings of loss because Scorpio is connected to that the energy of transformation losing something and gaining it in a, in a, in a different way in another way um, and then also it can be connected to being more vulnerable and putting yourself in a space of you know what this is who I am, this is what I want, this is how I feel, where are you at and those types of things so now that Mercury has gone direct and the day before the new moon, I feel like it's really important for me to say that and to start off with that because again, this is how we're going to be setting our intention and this is something that's going to help us to become more clear with the next few steps as we move ahead. Now, one thing that I want you guys to be aware of is that Sagittarius is all about seeing the bigger picture. It's not about fine tune and detail, it's like take a step back and look at things from the whole instead of trying to piece together and figure out what is wrong and what is right it's how does it make you feel and what is the truth and the essence of the core of what is real for you and what it is that you want for yourself and Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter. Jupiter is all about expanding. It's all about taking things from the small and taking them to the next level. So that's the energy that this Sagittarius new moon has the potential to bring. But I don't see this as com complete culmination or things kind of like the cycle kind of revealing itself. I see this as seeds kind of being planted in order for this, you know, growth to happen and this perception to occur. And that's what Sagittarius will bring, the energy of Sagittarius. The other thing that's connected to this is this like inner knowingness, this truth that is right for you. And this is something that's been ingrained in you since the moment that you stepped foot into the earth, since the moment that you came out of the womb. This is not something that is taught to you, that's more Mercury. When we're working with Jupiter, this is what you know is reality because it's the truth of you know your perception on things and what you want for yourself and your direction Jupiter also connects to the energy of asking for gurus or having some type of inner wisdom or some other some type of help in order to help navigate help you to navigate as you walk this earth and when we have this new moon in Sagittarius it's opening up for that energy again it can come in the form of an outside person coming in and saying like look I know that you've been struggling with this let me help you or you know, I can provide insight in this and clarity in this. Maybe it's the a start of travel or mind expansion or getting out and about, connecting with new friends, connecting with new people, new groups, um, putting yourself in a new space. It's anything other than what it is that you are is what this new moon is going to attempt to bring into your life. That's the other thing too is that the opposite 
of Sagittarius is Gemini, and Gemini kind of sticks with its normal circles. Now, Gemini is very sociable, it's very sociable energy, and it's open, but at the same time, it kind of sticks with comfort zones in, in a lot of ways. And even though it's connecting, it doesn't really dive into it. Gemini is not known for depth. When it comes to the energy of Sagittarius, this is something different than who you are and being open to that because if you're stuck in the same spot, the same people, the same groups, the same like culture, the same lifestyle, you are limited to just that lifestyle. Even though that's a good thing and it works for you, you've totally cut out all of you know the blessings of you know, different perspectives, different ways of lo of life, and different per different ways of viewing things and experiencing this life. And there are certain people who bring different lessons and bring different perspectives into your life that will help to round you out instead of you just kind of being stuck and limited to this one thing that you've become accustomed to. So with this new moon in Sagittarius, I really want you guys to maybe not be so picky and be so set in your ways with. I guess not what it is that you want but where it is that you think it's gonna come from because again Mercury is is ruling Virgo which is the sign of perfection and thinks that it knows Virgo I'm a Virgo so it has a, a very I a specific idea about what it wants <clears throat> and doesn't really settle for less um, it almost rejects anything that doesn't seem right to it which is good for making sure that your environment is pure and making sure that you know nothing's infiltrating your energy field that doesn't deserve to be there. But at the same time, Mercury also rules Gemini, which wants to seek and wants to learn and wants to expound on that. But again, Gemini doesn't really dive into that any further than asking questions and leaving it at that. It keeps it very superficial level. Versus Jupiter says, look, you know what, you may have thought that this is your life is gonna look this way or your relationship's gonna be this way or this is what is for you or whatever, but in reality, there's a whole world out there and there's gonna be different people and different things that are going to amplify your life if you are open to receive it. And again, this means that you have to put yourself in a different, totally different comfort zone, even though um, the majority of the planets were once retrograde and ha having you take steps back to kind of reevaluate. That's a lot of what 2018 has kind of been, is about this breakdown in order to break through. But as we're folding this year up and as we're you know, saying goodbye to all of the lessons and all of the blessings of 2018, now with this new moon in sign of Sagittarius, it's saying, look, it's time for you to open up. You don't know everything. And the way to find those answers is by looking within yourself. What intrigues you? What interests you? Instead of you saying no to this thing that sparks this adventure in you and this passion and this life and this jovial spirit, instead of saying no to it, why don't you start by saying yes or at least being more um, flexible to it coming in and gracing your life with the blessings that it is that it wants to give to you because that's what the new moon is is working here to do now again you know looking at this this new moon I can see that Mars is moving through the sign of Pisces and Mars again is how we work to achieve something how we work to accomplish things and Mars moving through Pisces is a little directionless it's you know kind of drifting right now it kind of feels like where am I going what, what's going on where are we at um, but there is no forcing with this if anything it's taking a step back letting go like in my last video that I talked about with this week ahead for December the 3rd I keep seeing us you know kind of lifting our feet up and working like kind of being buoyed by the universe and you don't know where this wave is going to take you you just know that it's taking you somewhere and nine times out of ten it's gonna be new land new territory uncharted territory because that's what Jupiter and Sagittarius energy is all about is taking you to this new foreign things again I want to reiterate to you guys it's something that you're not accustomed to the status quo what you've said yes to in the before in the past what made sense to you in the past is not what is trying to present itself to you in this life and that is a good thing it's because it's trying to make you look at the world differently it's trying to open you up to new people new experiences that are way better than if you just stay in your status quo and that again that's not easy that's not effortless but it's perfect it's divine so I just find that so magical. I find that so amazing. Again, it's not easy. It's like getting on a plane and you don't know what that world, that new life is gonna give you, this new adventure, this new trip is going to give you. Does it make you excited? Does it make you fearful? I don't know, get on the plane, go experience it. So 
I do want you guys to realize that with this new moon, sorry guys, I'm in New Orleans and there's a plane that's flying over us right now, so I'm trying to like talk over it, but maybe I should wait. But with this new moon, this is really about planting the seed and watching to see it manifest and waiting to see what happens with it versus fighting and forcing. You do not want to keep, you know, paddle and paddle. This is about setting the intention, focusing the mind, knowing what it is that you want and reconnecting. So I'm seeing meditation, I'm seeing alchemy, I'm seeing working with ocean, working with rivers, working with salt of the earth. So I'm seeing like Epsom salts. Um, Epsom salt, detox baths, energy soaks, those types of things. Those are the things that I feel like you're going to find a lot of potent energy because that's what it is that we're working with. Um, I don't really want you guys to make concrete plans during this time um, unless I just, I'm, I don't know, I'm just really hesitant to say, you know, set things in concrete because again, so much is kind of like cloudy and wishy-washy. Um, I almost see some people like kind of forcing things. Don't do that. Just don't like it's just not a good time I'll tell you when it's a good time to push right now. It's not the time to push. I'm not gonna push you don't push the other thing that I'm seeing is um, Yeah, just being listening 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 and hearing what people are saying before you act Listening and knowing what it is that you want to say before you say it don't act on reaction Don't act on habit do different be better clearly know what it is that you want, clearly know where it is that you stand, and then say it, and then assert it. I see that being far better than you just kind of blurting out and word vomiting from an emotional place or from a triggered spot, and then having to deal with the repercussions of that, especially now that Mercury is moving direct. These things are becoming a little bit more clear for us, and your words are still vulnerable to being misconstrued. You're very vulnerable to regretting what it is that you say. Mercury, again, has you kind of retracing your steps, so now that we're kind of moving forward, it's a very slow progress. It's not, you know, rocket fuel. Again, it's, we're entering, we're, it's not even the fact that we're ending the year 2018, although that's very important to notice, but it's, it's just the energy of the planets right now are suggesting, like, we don't want to push, we don't want to fight, although the energy is there. Sun squaring Mars, which creates this I gotta have it, I'm competitive, tell me no, and I'm gonna go for it anyways. So that's kind of what it is that you're fighting against, but if I were you, and as your astrologer, and as your intuitive, and as a fellow co-creator of manifesting the life of your dreams, I really suggest that if you're going to use this irritation in anything, it's to kind of ground yourself, to not diminish the irritation, not to diminish that energy, but to channel it in you know, putting those feelings into creating, co-creating with the universe what it is that you want for yourself because this new moon is all about planting that seed. And again, remember, you know, how you think that things are going to be is not always how they're going to be and the truth of that is within you, but sometimes this feeling of fear can kind of come up or anxiety or the unknown. All of those things are natural, but they shouldn't stop you from being open to what the universe ultimately has for you. There's a whole world out there for you to explore. There's different people, di people from different cultures, different people from different belief systems. These are people, um, during the Sagittarius New Moon, this is finding someone who has a totally different belief system than you, a totally different walk of life. It's something foreign to you. It's something almost alien to you that you're not accustomed to. But just because it's not something normal or that you're used to doesn't mean that you should automatically say no to it. Please don't say no to it. Um, the other thing that I'm seeing that I want to note is the fact that the part of fortune is squaring off with Pluto. Now, this is showing me very, very strongly that any opposition, anything that seems like it's almost misfortunate is actually there for a reason. Pluto is connected to transformation and death and then rebirth. So although it may seem like there's a struggle or something might need to be released or something might be brought up to the surface, especially since Pluto rules Scorpio, Mercury is sitting in the sign of Scorpio, Mercury now moving direct the day before there's some things that are kind of bubbling up to the surface again Things are not what it is that they seem so whatever it is that's coming up Whatever it is that it's revealing itself, which is not normal for new moons normally this energy comes during the full moon But during the new the new moon is just these seeds kind of being planted channel that energy and realize that You know what all of this any opposition any type of challenge any type of pushback or feelings of I need to let go, I need to release my sense of control, or I need to float, I need to allow this to do what it is that it's going to do, or this is what I want, this is what I'm passionate about, this is what I'm an advocate for, this is what I desire. All of these things, all of them are kind of pushing there to create the right opportunity at the right moment. 
That's what the part of fortune does. <laughs> Especially because the part of fortune is falling in the sign of Libra, which is all about balance and harmony and connection and, you know, you know, meeting other people and par partnering up. I definitely see, you know, this interesting dynamic that is happening by who it is that you partner up with or whether it be a job, whether it be a person, someone that you love, someone that you really care about, um, finances, these, these types of things too. Um, and last thing, I know you guys, I said that that was the last thing that I was going to say, but here I am still talking. Venus is moving to the sign of Scorpio. And again, she wants more intimacy. She wants more depth. She wants more realness and raw within relationships, connection. The things that you're spending your money on does it serve a purpose. You don't want to do anything superficial. It has to have meaning to it. It has to have substance to it. But the thing is, is that sometimes she wants something so badly that she might actually like kind of compromise or make an impulse decision that because she just wants it so badly, you know what I mean? Not that she'll regret, but just she might be, not regret, oh, I already said that. Not that she'll regret it, but it's just like, it's so impulsive because there's something that it is that she wants so badly. So it's really take your time with this. Don't push anyone during this time to, to cement anything, especially when it comes to business relationships and those types of stuff because Venus is sitting directly opposite of Uranus and she's so impulsive and she wants so much but um, people are trying to find themselves right now. They're trying to find where they fit in, where they want to, you know, what's gonna be a good fit for them, what that's gonna look like. And what I don't want you guys is to just kind of latch onto something or break away from something when, you know, take your time. There's too many things right now that are cloudy in the cosmos. So work your detox bath soaks. If you need a charge soak, it's with it's in my shop for you. We'll ship it out as quickly as we can. Make your own if needed. Again, like I said in my video for the week ahead, don't work with fragrance oils during this time. Those are very dense with energy. In fact, they, their vibration is very, very dense and very low and very draining. You wanna work with all natural herbs and oils, essential oils as much as possible. Make sure that they're plant-based because those have a higher vibration to them. They're gonna help you to kind of lift your feet up and to float and to work with this energy energy versus being dragged down by it because there is a strong you know just like I'm saying with this ocean we want to lift our feet up and kind of float there's this kind of like you know um, what is that called like when the water kind of spins and the suction that kind of can pull some people down not my tribe okay so be patient work your magic set intention Think about you know Mercury. Mercury rules the mind, it rules communication, it rules your thoughts, and your ability to co-create, your ability to manifest. That's where your power is. It's not in forcing, it's not in pushing, it's working your alchemy by words, thoughts, and producing things from that, producing the outcome. So staying in a positive space and speaking it into existence, writing it down, and then somehow incorporating it into the bath, incorporating it into ocean, river, those types of things, and grounding, all right? I love you guys. Make sure you subscribe to the, the channel because I'm posting all the time, especially now that I'm in New Orleans, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.